So, how are you feeling about technology's education after all the work you had to do last week? Oh, sorry. <laughs> a bit of work. Pardon? Not going to lie, it's a bit of work. <laughs> it was a little bit of work, yes. Remember, though, it does count for your assessment. So, it does mean you don't have to do a major assignment. So, there was a bit of a balance there. <laughs> okay, so last week we learned about the, the curriculum, so what the actual um, authorities say has to be covered in the technologies learning area. And this week we're learning about the content. What are the actual nitty gritty bits and pieces that we actually have to teach? Um, and we now start breaking things into our two subjects, digital technologies and design and technology. Hopefully you would have seen as a fair bit of crossover, particularly in the processes and production skills, where we go through a similar design process, but each subject has different outcomes that they want from students. Design and technology, much more about our attitudes to food and fiber production and to being good consumers and producers um, and creating solutions using various tools and techniques that students practice. Now, in the primary years, they're not too complex uh, um, tools and processes. In the upper years, they start using networking tools and 3D printers and a lot of other stuff like that that gets more involved. That said, there are still plenty of primary schools that are using 3D printers. In fact, probably not the majority of schools at the moment, but a lot of primary schools have now got 3D printers. And lots of them are getting robotic kits and electronic kits. So there's lots of this technology coming down into the primary school. Um, in the past, the primary schools often used to have to borrow equipment off the high schools. Um, that was much easier if you were in a K-12 school, like many private schools, but it was much more difficult for um, state schools. That's where a lot of the feeder schools would often, that feed into a particular high school, would go to, on special design and technology days to the high school and use their equipment, like they did, also did with science, and go and use the science laboratories in the high school. But more and more now, that equipment and resources are coming in for primary schools. Certainly not the majority yet, but it's happening. So hopefully you've all produced some lesson plans. Now the intent of this section is for you to share those lesson plans. So we're going to form little groups of um, about five or six people. So we'll probably form three groups. Um, and you're going to share those lesson plans with each other. And then you're going to provide each other with feedback. Now you've only got about two minutes to share your lesson plans. Um, so about well, maybe three, one and a half minutes for each lesson plan. So just go through them briefly. Don't worry about the codes and stuff like that that you're going to use for um, sim school. Just share the basic ideas and the structure of how you've thought about doing your lessons. Um, and do that for design technology and digital technologies. And then receive the feedback from your peers. And write those down, because you need to actually have a record of that. Okay? You need to have a record of the feedback you receive and the feedback you give to others. You spend about two minutes or so on feedback for each person, so about five minutes per person. How do you want that structured to be submitted? In terms of your lesson plan, or the, okay, in terms the of the, feedback. okay, I've just got a form where it's got um, feedback you've received from each of, the mm -hmm. each of the people in your group, so you've got five sort of um, areas you can fill in, and then five or so areas where you've given feedback. You don't need to fill them all in. Remember, this is not for marks. Oh, this is sorry. This is for marks. It's not marked against criteria. The whole point of these activities is to help you learn, okay, and to receive that feedback. So I'm not worried about the quality. Obviously, the better the quality, the better you're going to learn. But I will check just to see whether or not it's you haven't just put in rubbish. But I won't be going through and saying no, that's not good enough. So just don't worry about that aspect of it. But you do have to do it to get the marks. Um, so yes, yeah, so in terms of recording it, if you could just do one or two lines of feedback you've received from each person and one or two lines of feedback you've given to the people that you provide the feedback. And then there'll be forms for you to fill, a form for you to fill in and put those details in. Or you can attach a file and stuff like that. So any questions? Okay, so let's get the groups. Looks like we have a natural grouping here. Maybe one there and one in the back area. So about five or six per group. 
and get started on the feedback and sharing your lessons. This in between you guys. <laughs> Just a little camera. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <Merry Christmas. laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not streaming live. That's good. Thank you. I'm finishing up my dog. Yeah, that angle yeah. was not great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I chose um, follow, describe, and represent a sequence of steps and decisions or algorithms needed to solve simple problems for year two. Um, I literally just did Hour of Code, like we did last week, uh, the Frozen one. I thought it was still relevant to that age group as well. Um, to start off, it was more so like a teacher presentation, so like they could, like he, well he wouldn't have done it for us, but he could just show them what to do, although the thing tells you to. Um, and then for the students, they will view the video that comes up first once they click on the Frozen thing. Um, and then they would like define, I guess, and just have a chat with the person next to them about um, the components of like what they needed to do just from the video so that you knew what was actually happening. Um, and then they can create their sequence as a whole class with the teacher so they guide the teacher. Um, and then they just clarify like the sequence and components of it just through like the teacher asking them a couple of questions so after they've made it. Um, and then they go and practice doing it themselves so they have a go at making it. Um, I didn't really do like a test or anything for them to do it because I feel like it does it within it. Like if they get it wrong, they have to reset it and start again. So I didn't really do a test, but I just said, if it was necessary, like the students could show the teacher what or, what or how far they got and what they got wrong to have to fix up, if that helps. Um, and to summarise the lesson, um, it was more so just the students telling the teacher what they found easy, what they found difficult, what they enjoyed, what they didn't know, and what they now can do by themselves. Yeah, and that's it. Okay, I'm just going to write feedback so you guys can tell me. <laughs> I like that the team, like the kids were guiding the teacher, like yeah. enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. But the teacher was still like demonstrating. So like enough scaffolding for yeah, them to yeah, know, definitely. but not for them to be like, okay, the teacher's done it for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you um, do this? No, I wasn't sure if we had to actually make the Sim School thing as well. Yeah, I don't so think we were. I've just done the lesson plan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you guys should write that down as what feedback you gave. Yeah, yeah so I just wrote. You like, I just literally wrote that you said it was good that students were guiding the teacher yes. and what you wrote because you need to write your yeah. feedback down what you gave. Can we write it for yeah. every single person though? Or like, I think we only need to write two, maybe? Like, yeah, maybe exactly. now, two? Yeah. I feel like everything's so unorganised. I honestly just can't get my head yeah, out of any of this. Yeah, I didn't know what to do properly because I think Yeah, me, I'm ready for no, so I like, Do you need another thing? thing? I like to um, if you want to tell me. I just like how, like, when they watch the video, then the kids talked about it together. Yeah. Because I found, like, even when we did it, yeah. I was like, I still don't know what we're doing. Okay. Um, so I like that. Yeah. Do we have to write the person's name? Yeah, let's do Natalie. 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 Yeah. Well, yeah. The easiest way of all is to find out is if you go to okay. the Robert Williams project, scroll down, you've got all of your activities, and then feedback from the teacher. At the end, there'll be all the forms for each of them under each of these ones. Sorry, what did you say, Um, you'll, you'll type them into the form eventually, but if you want to just write it on paper now, it's fine. Okay. Okay.
I'm a bit How lost. Are you I understand you'll be a bit lost. Yeah. Um, as we work through, you'll see that each week we do two lesson plans. Yeah. We share those and give each other feedback. And then we simulate them using a computer simulation with a simulated class. And then I lead you through two lessons. Okay. So will we go through that simulation today? We will, after, okay. after you've shared and done your feedback. Yeah. So, what do you base your Sorry? What are your lessons like? Okay. Well, each week, eventually you're going to submit uh, four lesson plans about digital technologies. Yeah. One, one on digital technologies and one on design technologies. Yeah. And two of it, or whatever you want. Um, and each week we're doing two practice ones, basically. Yeah. They still count for marks, but not um, like they will at the very end. Yeah. So by the end of the course, you'll have 20 lesson plans that you've done to select four, your four best for submission uh, for your final assignment. Okay. That's the intent of doing all this. And the intent is that you're going to get much better with your lesson plans through this peer feedback process and the computer simulations. So I don't expect them to be fantastic lesson plans at the moment, but by the end of um, in 10 weeks of this, your, your lesson plan should be very, very good. Yeah. That's what we're aiming towards. But now we're just starting off. So, so if you could provide feedback on other people's lesson plans, which you yeah. want to run your own for the moment, yeah. but keep record that feedback, which you can then submit that and get marks for that section. Okay. And then so for our lesson plan for next week, mm -hmm. where does that come from? Are we, do we have so certain... What we today? Yeah. Yes. And you'll see that I give some suggested ideas for lesson plans. Will you do that every week? Yes. Okay. You don't have to follow those, <laughs> but I know that some of you want suggestions, so I provide. Like for this week, I suggested doing a bebop lesson and a tower lesson. Yeah, which is what, what we did, did last week. Yeah. 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 So it'll be similar to uh, things this week. But eventually, you'll be coming up with your own ideas yeah. for lesson yeah. plans. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. okay. So start sharing. <laughs> Who's going to go first? Have we already one. one? Oh, one. Have you given feedback? Yes. Wonderful, even better. <laughs> Who's going to go next then? <laughs> sure. Okay, um, I did the one on the tower building thing. Katie. Katie? Katie. Is this, do we have to do like one of each? So the design and the digital? Yeah. 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 Right. I only did one. Yes, I did you beat me, I did <laughs> <laughs> um, And I did it for, I think it was year four. I did year four anyways. Um, so basically I just did a bit of a teacher explanation of like what we're doing and the materials and just basic. Um, and then gave the students an opportunity to, to talk about it and think about how they could do it. And just start thinking and then also develop a plan in groups as well. So then... Yeah, I guess. Brainstorming. Sort of, yeah, brainstorming and yeah. stepping out. Okay, we could do this and we could do this sort of thing and making that plan. So remember, and you should always be trying to find a positive and, and a drawing or a graphic, some sort of demonstration of what they're going to do on the paper. And then group work activities, build it, and then at the end, uh, present it and then do a bit of a compare and contrast thing between the different groups and what worked and what didn't work. And then, um, sort of work out how we should do it better the next time. Like a yeah, yeah. yeah, what the groups did and the matching up. Would that just be like verbal or would you get them to write it down so then you can like see? I think the compare and contrast would be writing it down. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. Maybe you could do like, like, a, um, like a group like reflection so they can yeah. all contribute and then after that they could do like the compare and contrast and write it down. Oh, that yeah. way they're not just yeah, like individual. sitting there with like, like books on their hands because they've already got like something in their brain to yeah. Yeah. get cool. them writing. But yeah, I like that compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Discussing mm -hmm. about how. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just following on from you, I think it's a good way for other students to see how other people create it, like yeah. how other people interpret one thing. Um, so like, like we did last week, obviously everyone built a tower in a different way and without people showing other people, you don't see that, like you only see your view, I guess. I think that's a really good way to do it. Yeah, I think it's important as well to have that reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Students are students to like so that next time they do that.
next one. Um, so, um, I separated students into groups and gave them like a poster and then started with them like writing technology and their ideas of what they use, like what different ty um, types of technology they use in another classroom, um, just to kind of get their brains thinking. Um, and then just created a technology about what technology is used for and what do they do when they get a new technology. Because in my situation, they've never seen anything before. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, yeah. had them, uh, and then show a YouTube video um, to visually show them how like, the beatbots are used. And then in their groups, um, they're going to create like literal steps they're going to write down and have um, their little maps and they're going to choose objects from around the class to have, have as um, obstacles on their map and then they have to create steps to get around from one spot to the end. Um, and so I said that <laughs> students are going to write their own individual steps because they're in groups of four or five and each student needs to trial their steps and then reflect within their groups of what worked well and what didn't and to go back and alter their steps accordingly so that they can make sure they get to that end goal. Um, and then I said that, yeah, so once they've altered their steps, if time allowed, then they will go back and try their new sequence of steps. And then at the end of the class, just ask students questions and create a dis like facilitate a discussion um, for a reflection of what worked well, what didn't and did they have to change any of those steps and why um, and what did they learn about having to use new technology and how that affects how like, technology is used. Yeah. I liked how after they did the first trial where like they had to go back and fix their steps if they needed to so it's like giving them the opportunity to go back and try again and actually because sometimes we can do things like oh I got it wrong oh well yeah. but actually having to go back and Figure it out. I um I like how you've got them that they're writing their individual steps in like within their group because like if I didn't if I was in the group and I didn't know what to do and I kind of let somebody else take over but it makes sure that they get involved. Yeah. You know? That each student is learning at the same yeah. time. Yeah, they're not just learning saying like just me do all the work or you do all the work yeah. while everyone else just sits there. I have a question. Yeah. In your lesson, like, do you let the kid kind of manipulate them first, like just for a test run before they write out their sequence and stuff? Yeah, just thinking like you showed them the video, which was great, um, like because obviously they don't know, it's like an introduction, but I was just thinking back to my class when we were doing something like that, a lot of kids just want to touch it and they want to play around with it and I think we even did it last week, we were just, because I'd never seen it before, I was like, I just want to play around with it before I have to think, okay, left, two, up, two, like that type of thing. Yeah, just to manipulate the people a little bit and then have them realise that if we tell it to turn left, the whole B-bot turns